Hi everyone, this is Logan here, and I'm bringing you an interlude in between my uh, go-kart videos here to bring you what probably looks on screen to be just a big mess of wires and uh, transistors, but I'll show you exactly what I'm doing here. Um, this is going to be my new driver for my go-kart, and the reason I'm bringing this specific video to you is because I haven't found anyone else on the internet that will show you how this works. Now I'm sure there are plenty of people out there who actually know how to drive an IGBT with a hall sensor, but I haven't found any of them. I take that back. I found one. Um, I am going to link it down in the description below, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a good starter video, but it wasn't quite as clear as I'd like it to be. Uh, so I've done a lot of experimenting, and this is what I've come up with, actually, two ways of doing it. So, um, if you have not yet seen my videos on my electric motor and my go-kart, you can catch those, um, let's see, here and uh, here. Um, if you don't want to see me explain everything that happened to my go-kart to warrant the position I'm in right now, skip to this timestamp. Um, just go ahead and fast forward to that, where I actually show how this all works. Uh, in the meantime, for those of you who are following that series, I want to explain why I'm doing this. So, you may have noticed that I haven't put out a video about my go-kart um, for quite a while. And there's a reason for that. I blew a bunch of transistors in it. It was actually pretty spectacular. I wish I had a video about it. Um, I started up the go-kart, I pressed the pedal, it started to move, and I was excited. And then after not very long, a few seconds, um, it died. And as I was pushing it back in my garage, it seemed like it wouldn't move. And I found out that the motor was, the uh, rear right motor was still getting power. And when I went back to look at it, I found out that the transistors, not these, but the Darlington transistors that look just like these, were gl literally glowing red hot. There was so much current going through it. Um, something failed, and when these things fail, they fail open, and they were just dumping current. Remember those big Chinese, those big batteries I got from China? They were just dumping as much current as possible into them. They were literally glowing red hot, and by the time I could get my camera out, they all started popping and sizzling, and uh, lots and lots of smoke. The garage smelled bad for about two days. Uh, so I had to come up with something else. It turns out that those transistors, which I knew, were only capable at that voltage of about seven amps or so per transistor. I very obviously exceeded that. So I went on the hunt and I found these, which are theoretically capable of up to 75 amps. What is this here? This is an IGBT. Uh, it is actually a combination of Darlington transistors, which I was using a much bigger version of this out there, um, and a MOSFET. And the problem was, same with these and MOSFETs, I couldn't figure out how to turn them on. Otherwise, I never would have used the Darlingtons to begin with. So, I have finally figured out how to turn them on. Um, and that's where this all comes in. These things should be able to pump a ton of power in there, and I'm also putting fuses in into the go-kart, which I should have had before. You may recognize this as a kit I showed almost a year ago uh, from the website simplemotors.com that's down in the description as well. Uh, basically it's a getting started kind of kit. Um, has a little hall, hall sensor there and it detects the magnet. When it detects it, it turns it on and off the coil so that this can rotate uh, uses this transistor to drive it. I went back to this because it's very, very simple, it allows me to diagnose things very easily. I just have this on there keeping it, uh, keeping it down. Now, the problem is IGBTs work a little differently. Darlingtons, as you probably remember, take any current, which these put out maybe you know, 15, 20, 25 milliamps, virtually nothing, sends it in here, it amplifies that current through here, maybe 50, 100, 200 times, and then sends it into the coils. So it's literally just amplifying, multiplying the amount of current that this thing is putting out. Now these have a gate that has to be opened and closed. So basically when this gate right here 
senses a positive voltage, it then allows it to open and dump current through it. And it does it a lot more efficiently than the Darlington transistors. It can also handle a much higher current and a much higher voltage. The problem I was running into was that these Hall sensors, at least the specific model I have, uh, put out almost no voltage. And these need about five volts to open and close. So I came up with the idea, after a lot of searching, um, of using this to open that. Because this uses supply voltage. So if I put five volts on here, or 10 volts on here, or whatever voltage I put on here, these are gonna output that voltage right to here. So I'm gonna show you the circuit here, and then I'm gonna show you how it works. So basically what's happening, this part is actually all the same. The Hall sensor is triggering this in exactly the same manner. The only difference now is that instead of, so it's inputting, positive right into it, just like before. The only difference is that instead of outputting the current to the motor, it is outputting to the gate. So even though this is the negative port, which would normally be to the motor and then to negative on the supply, in this case, once it's open, the IGBT has no idea that it's there it just sees a continuous circuit going straight back to positive. So it still sees a positive voltage there. Now the one difficulty I ran into, if you can see, there's a resistor here going between the gate and the emitter. The reason for that is that there has to be a way to dump that power, that voltage, I mean. So the positive voltage is going here, but while this is shut off, there's no way any voltage can get there. So it has to have a way to be able to send the current through, and then once that current is moving through, there's positive voltage going through this here. It then senses it and turns on. So there has to be a way to bleed off that voltage, and that's how you do it. If you don't do that, then when this thing, this thing will sense a magnet, turn this on, but then as soon as the magnet rotates out of view, the voltage is still here, and it'll stay on, and you don't want that. So this allows it to shut off. That's the only way I've been able to figure out how to do it. Now these, let me explain. This is a PNP transistor. These are NPNs, and there is a way to get it. I had that working actually before dinner today, and I came back and it stopped working, but I later traced that to be this alligator clip or somewhere in the wire having a short. So I spent about two hours trying to figure out why this stopped working just from me going away from di to dinner. Uh, and I think that was actually the issue. So uh, very shortly, I'm going to reconfigure this to use these, uh, which are smaller and cheaper. And I just ha happen to have them lying around, whereas I don't have enough of those to actually put them in my go-kart right now. Uh, but I'm gonna try and show you both ways. This is the circuit. Oh, I'll try and get no shadow there. It's not really an electrical diagram. It's sort of a circuit for dummies because quite frankly, I'm a dummy at this stuff and I need, I need it simplified. So up here, we've got the source. This is the hall sensor. We've got the source um, and we've got the ground and we've got the output. So the source needs positive. The ground needs negative. The output is, what, is where it sends a signal. This is the PNP transistor. That's the base. That's basically what it's looking at to know whether it should be open or closed. Um, the emitter needs positive power and uh, the collector sends out the signal to the gate of the IGBT. Same thing here, the collector sends whatever power it's using into the coil and the other side of the coil has positive power. And then the emitter of the IGBT goes to negative power. So it's actually a really simple circuit, but I have yet to find a, at least an easily findable source on the internet that actually demonstrates this. So now I'm gonna turn this on for you and I'm gonna show it in action. So I'm gonna only crank this up to 
about six volts or so. I don't want to go too high yet. I don't have any heat sinks on any of this stuff. So, there we go. And this thing will get up going pretty fast for only six volts. Take it away and it stops. And again, if this resistor was not there, that would not happen. It would not stop. But give it a little spin. Starts right up. Now, of course, in the go-kart, um, I have three phases per motor. So each motor is going to have to have a minimum of three of these. Um, realistically, I'm actually going to have two per phase, just, just in case. And then I'm going to have fuses going to those. Uh, probably one fuse to each one. Um, right now I'm going to put 30 amp fuses in there. So that should be more than enough to handle the spikes of current in the beginning. And if I'm pulling, what, 30 times 6, if I'm pulling 180 amps per motor, we've got a bigger problem because, wow, that's going to be powerful. All right, give me a minute here. Let me go ahead and reconfigure this to NPN. And then I will be right back with you to show you that and uh, end the video. All right, I hate to leave on a disappointing note, but I spent another hour trying to configure it, uh, and it doesn't make sense. It's not working. This is the circuit I created right before dinner. It worked just fine, I swear. Scout's on her. Um, it's not working now. I hate leaving on a bad note, but this is how I'm going to leave it for now. Um, it's not how I'm going to leave it all together because it was working, so I know there is just something that I'm missing. I know all of these wires are working correctly, um, but it's also late at night and I'm tired. So I'll pick this up back in the morning, and as soon as I get this working, I will make another video showing it working and showing the correct circuit uh, layout. But I hope you liked it. Uh, I hope this helped in some way because... Nowhere on the internet that I could find did a hall sensor and an IGBT ever hook up. I'm sure it's somewhere. I just can't find it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. And like I said, I will follow up with this. And also, as soon as I get all this stuff into the go-kart, um, it will be go time, so to speak. I will make another video of it actually moving. So I got plenty of ideas of uh, how to keep progressing with that cart. And... Uh, We'll go from there. So thanks for checking this out. Uh, like it if you like it. And of course, dislike it if you didn't. But uh, let me know why so I can improve. And of course, have a great day.